Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Grace. So everybody's coming in that door. When anybody comes in, just say, Norm, you know, like they did in Cheers, right? <laughs> Doesn't it feel like we're all going to see whoever's wandering in. We're just going to be, they're just, you know, right in our sight line. But no, we're thankful to be gathered together for worship. We wanted to still say, listen, what happened? Let me just give you a lowdown of why we're entering in this door, what you see when you go out there. There's fans everywhere. Here's what happened. We had some drains fail uh, during the storm on Thursday night. Because of our, our storm drain failure, um, water got in the building uh, all, the way, all the way in the offices, conference room. That whole wing was, had water. All through the whole gathering area, water. Into the preschool, water. Into the bathrooms, water. Into the uh, cry room, water. The sanctuary, for the most part, was spared. So, um, but what happened was, uh, so we, we immediately on Friday morning when we realized we had a problem, uh, within just a few hours, that water was extracted. And it was, it was removed. We brought in the crews, and they got all the water out. That was Friday. Yesterday, ServPro began dealing with So what happens is, I didn't even know this. This is a lesson in life. Some, of the life. some of life's problems you can't see with your eye. They're behind the walls. And that's true with, with what we're dealing with. The water came in, and the drywall, which looks perfectly fine, acts like a sponge. And so it sucks all the water up. And so we needed to bring in the fans. What they did is they drilled holes in the drywall and then were able to aerate it out. And so um, our head trustee and chairman of the congregation are getting in all the details, but I'm trying to tell everybody what's going on. And so, hey, guys, guys, I can hear you. There, thanks. Let me explain what's going on. There we go. Okay. Those two guys... I'm telling you what, if it weren't for their help in getting on the ball, we would have so much further damage. But they tirelessly work to line everything up, and now we just have to pray that insurance comes through for us. We just are still uncertain about all of that. We don't know. We're praying that it will. But if it doesn't, we'll let you know. But thankfully, things are drying. Yeah, we'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think that was all that funny, but now that I say it, yeah, it feels like, yeah. So uh, I want to thank our leadership who, who responded uh, so uh, swiftly to deal with what we were facing, and hopefully we're, uh, at worst, um, we'll still have to replace some drywall, probably going to have to tear out all of the floor. We're hoping not, but... Certainly, all the, the floor in the, in the office area is already out. That carpet was so saturated, and that's where the, most of the ab absorption of the drywall was happening. That's all ripped out of there already. We may have to, even though our gathering area in this area is new, we may have to replace all of that. So we'll see. We'll see. But I do want to thank our, our church leadership, even though I, even though I scolded uh, Mike and, and Bob. All right. Okay, because of all the wires and kind of going through, we're not going to have uh, our Sunday school half hour. But the good news is, even though it's Labor Day and Peach Festival here in Romeo, uh, as you come to worship, we still will have our Sunday school half hour next week. Uh, so just be mindful of that. So kids, hang in there this week. Uh, we're just going to keep you in worship a little bit uh, for that. Um, September 10th is our outdoor worship and picnic at the pavilion. So we're going to use our new pavilion for all of that. And, uh, and so we're excited about that. With that said, our fall worship schedule begins at 917 uh, at 830 and uh, 11. So we get back into our fall worship schedule on the 17th, 830 and 11. And we continue with our Monday evening worship. That never stops. Fall Bible studies, see the grace notes. They have the grace notes kind of over there as you kind of go out. We're going to ask everybody, if you do have to use the restroom, okay, but be careful. There's kind of lots going on there. If you use, need to use the cry room, that's available too, teenagers. So, 
you know, that's there. Okay, and then um, as we grow closer, to, as we grow God's family deeper in friendship and in faith, uh, we're going to start. Have we're going to be four weeks in the book in the chapter of Romans, chapter eight of Romans, about life in the Spirit. And so I'm challenging you through the month of September. Here's the challenge. Try, if you can, read Romans chapter 8 each day. Just read it every day. If that's too much of a challenge, maybe three times a week, every other day. Try every other day to read Romans chapter 8. If not, once a week. You grab onto the challenge, but that's where we're going we're gonna to be in Romans chapter 8 for one whole month, that one chapter to consider what it is to have life in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God in our life. As we show God's love, just a reminder, Gleaners is Wednesday, September 6th, and Bell Choir, uh, there's grace notes regarding uh, Bell Choir for you. Okay, and as we have the wonderful privilege of sharing the life that is ours in Christ, share an invitation. Let them know, invite them to worship, invite them to a picnic, invite them to a Bible study, invite them to an event, Uh, share an invitation. All right, whew, that was a lot. All right, now, this is our final week, week eight of being in this book of Daniel, all about seeing in Daniel, encouraging in our lives a resilient faith, for weak uh, and weary Christians, for when we need encouragement through the midst of life to see and to know a faith that will not let go, a resilient faith. And so today is to live a, with a resilient faith when you know the end of the story. How is the way that we live our life in faith, what does it do to us to know how the story ends. I pray it's a service filled with hope for you today because of the end of the story for us. It's a glorious one. It's a glorious one. With that said, let's begin our worship with our call to worship from Daniel chapter 7. From Daniel chapter 7. And behold, with the clouds of heaven there came one like the Son of Man. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was was given given authority, authority, glory, glory, and and a a kingdom. kingdom. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. We gather to worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing for our opening song.
come before our Lord in a time of confession. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord, Lord of life, life I, I confess, confess that, that I am, I am by, by nature, nature dead, dead in sin, sin for faithless worrying and selfish pride, pride for, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do. You should cast me away from your presence forever. O Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ, even when we were dead in our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's remain standing for a song of praise. be with you always and also with you thank you so much you may be seated all right you guys come on up kids for the children's message come on up everybody I know since there's no children's church but Abby and Curtis are still here you can wave to them wave you guys there they are they love you even though we're not gonna have that special time together today but come on up oh you gotta sit right between brothers and sister good Hi, Ezekiel. <laughs> Molly, you're going to just have to come right up. All right. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, sweetheart. Okay. Now, I want you to just yell out. I'm going to give you some news. And you tell me if it's good news or bad news. All right? Wait, you haven't even heard yet. All right, here we go. Bad news. Bad news. All right. Monday, you have Monday you have to go to school. Is that good news or bad news? Who raise your hand if you say it's bad news? School is bad news. You gotta wake up. Yeah, bad news. Ugh. 
I wish summer could last forever. Raise your hand if you think school is good news. Oh, I love school. It's awesome. All right, here we go. Good news or bad news? You, you, have, you have to spend all day. You have to spend all day at the Peach Festival. Good news or bad news? You have, to go to the, you have to go to a carnival. Is that good news or bad news? Raise your hand if you think it's bad news. Oh, you got to stand in line. you got to pay so much money for all of those tickets. And you don't make that much money. But there's a heavy expectation that you just get ride after ride after ride. How many of you think it's good news? It's so much fun. Why is the fair fun? What is it fun? What's fun about it? Claire, what do you think, sweetheart? Oh, do you got stickers? Good news? All right. Being in church with no Sunday school, good news or bad news? Good news. Who says church without Sunday school is good news? I love listening to pastor just talk and talk and talk and talk and never stop talking. Is that good news? How many say bad news? I wish there were Sunday school today. Yeah, me too. Okay. I'm going to give you, no matter what the news is, no matter if you think it's good or bad, there is always in your life the good news that you are loved. We're going to hear about Daniel today, and he's going to get some bad news. He's going to get some bad news. But no matter what, God says, no matter how bad the news is, you, Daniel, always have good news. And here it is. God loves you. And so that's true for you. Whether you think school is good news or bad news, God loves you. Whether you like to go to the fair or not go to the fair, God loves you. Whether you love to listen to pastor talk for an hour and a half or you don't like him talking at all, God loves you. So what's the good news? God loves you. Yay! You can all go back to your seats. That's good news for me because I feel like I was starting to lose it. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you, good news or bad news? And I'm going to talk a lot today. Don't, don't answer that. Don't answer that. <laughs> All right. Well, the good news is we get to hear the gospel, the good news proclaimed to us in David Pickett's Our Reader. Good morning. Uh, This reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, and could everybody please stand? When Jesus came to the region of Chaos of Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you people say the man, the Son of Man, is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what do you, what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Thank you, David. And let's remain standing as we now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we come before our Lord in a time of offering. Just a note, because today was unusual, if you are like, oh, I missed it, the offering will be kind of in that corner right, right over there by the, as you leave, you can leave your offering there if you, if you still have it. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the blessing of this day. Even in the midst of all that we're going through in life, we still are gathered here, trusting in the depth of your love for us. Lord, would you use these, our offerings at Grace, that we might be a blessing to the people around us. For others that are going through difficult times, would you use these, our gifts, to meet needs? Would you use these, our gifts, to keep bringing your grace to the life of those who don't know you? We want that for our families, for our community, and for our world. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now we come before our Lord in a time of prayer. Uh, some folks that we'll be remembering in our prayers this morning... Uh, the family of uh, Rodney Hosney, uh, son of our Shirley Hosney, he was called to, called to his heavenly home, and we certainly pray for God's uh, peace and comfort for the family as they surround, uh, as they surround themselves uh, in mourning. Pray also for the fam uh, family of uh, Kevin Dutcher's father. So we pray for Kevin and his family as his father was uh, called to also be in, in his heavenly home. Uh, we pray for God's peace to be with them. Uh, we're praying for Anne, the mother of Bob Barrow. Uh, she is still in hospice care, and we certainly pray uh, that God would be with her and give her peace and comfort and be with Bob and the rest of the family as uh, they care for her. We're also praying for our Wally Herman. Uh, we got notice uh, this morning that Wally had a heart attack last night and had a stent put in, and I saw Erna, she dropped something off here and was on her way to the hospital. Uh, she said, Wally's doing well, so uh, I'll be going to see him right after service. And, uh, but we pray for uh, strength, for healing. I uh, also pray for Erna as she cares for Wally. So with that, let's stand and go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, from you and through you and to you are all things. You have built your church on the confession of the gospel and have promised that the gates of hell will not overcome it. Transform your church by the Holy Spirit so that she does not conform to the world. And to your church throughout the world, grant the faith and courage to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Draw forth your, from your people their proclamation of thanksgiving that they may tell of all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, grant that the office of the keys may be honored among us in order that we may confess our sin and be absolved in the name of Christ. As you have so graciously forgiven us, grant that we may extend this grace by forgiving others. And Heavenly Father, you care for all the families, children, single adults, and youth, that they might steadfastly walk in the way that leads to eternal life. Grant an increase in wisdom and grace to all who teach and learn. And Lord God, grant that all nations and leaders might act for peace, promote godliness and protect all who live under violence, oppression, injustice and fear, that all people might proclaim you. And Heavenly Father, you care for all victims of disaster, for those stricken by illness or infirmity, for the aged and infirm, for the grieving and for those near death. 
And Father, we brought names before you, and we come before you now in a time of prayer for those that we name in our hearts. Grant your healing hand to be upon all who call on you in time of need. O Lord, lead us to repentance and faith that we may not think more highly of ourselves than is right, but that we would set our hearts and minds on the things of God. Prepare us to receive the blessed gifts of our Lord's table, that this food may keep us holy and blameless in Christ now and when he comes again. From you and through you and to you are all things. To you, O Father, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, be glory now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We now join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we now join together in our song of the day.
may be seated. Resilient faith. When you know the end of the story. So here's what's going to happen in today's message as we think about these chapters in the book of Daniel. As we wrap up this time, this incredible book about resilient faith. When you know the end of the story, I'm going to give you three stories. One story is about a pastor. Figures. Not me. One story is about a Vietnam POW. Prisoner of war in Vietnam. And another story, that's Daniel's story. And then you. We consider those three stories and the story of your life, especially the end of the story. So, resilient faith. Let's start with the story of the true story, by the way. It's been greatly documented. That's one of the amazing things about this story is how much we really know from letters that were written. This story of a pastor, I want you to think and know that at the time of this story, this pastor is 86 years old. He's seen a lot of life. You live 86 years, you have seen a lot of life. And in those 86 years, he has seen great joys of life. And there are many, but he has also seen great joys sorrow. In the 86 years of life, he has lived with a ton of laughter. But in 86 years, he's also shed a lot of tears. This 86-year-old pastor, he lived through a time For the church, it was a miraculous growth. Thousands and thousands coming to faith in Jesus on the west coast of Turkey. It's an explosion of faith in Jesus. But in those 86 years, he's also seen and living at the moment of this story at 86, a great torture and persecution of Christians who bear the name of Jesus, who proclaim and confess Jesus as Lord. And they're being persecuted. He is a pastor to the pastors. The big churchy word for that is bishop. So he oversees all the churches on that west coast of Turkey, all kind of up and down that line. And he oversees all of that. And the officials know that it would be strategic to capture and execute this old pastor. And then maybe people would fall in line. All of this happens in 155 A.D. This is an old story. And the name of that bishop, the name of the pastor to the pastors is Polycarp. At 86 years old, those around him get word of the desire to capture and kill him. And so they convince him, you got you to leave. And so they swoop him away, and he finds resp- refuge at a farm off the beaten trail. Well, the officials finally track him down. They find him. And as history would record it, in that time that he's at the farm waiting, uncertain. He's day and night praying for the church, his churches and all the churches throughout the world. And finally there comes the day when when they come to the door to take him away, to be tried and executed. And here's what we're told. Polycarp, it says that he welcomes his captors in. He feeds them and prays for them. He welcomes them in. These are the men that are taking them away for him to die. He welcomes them in. 
He feeds them and he prays with them. After that, they bind him. They take him to an arena of all places where it is filled with the proconsul and an angry mob. And they say to Polycarp, listen, deny your faith in Jesus. And it says, as history records it, these words. I will tell it plainly. I am a Christian. That is in a resilient faith. And what we see in the life of Polycarp is what many years later would be coined as the Stockdale Paradox. The Stockdale Paradox, which brings us to the second story about Jim Scottdale. Jim Stockdale was a prisoner of war in Vietnam for seven and a half years. He was tortured. He was isolated. He was sensory deprived. He would be in that prison camp the leading, the highest ranking officer. And so he would see it even as a prisoner, his duty to continue to lead those men in that camp. And so he would lead this underground resistance. It's said that Jim Stockdale, in the way that he would keep these guys in solidarity, continuing on in the worst of circumstances. It says that he, Jim, knew every name of every prisoner. He knew all three, there was approximately 300 men in that prison camp, and he knew everyone by name. Because of the isolation, he developed this, this unique tapping code, often that was done by the snapping of towels, to communicate with each other. Jim Stockdale, as the highest ranking officer, often as a symbol, would put himself out there. And so he was often targeted for persecution, torture. It's on one of these days, it's the third day of his torture, where he hears a snapping sound. It's the code. Here is what he hears communicated to him by someone he knows by name. On the third day of torture, he heard this. God bless you, Jim Stockdale. Years later, Jim Stockdale would be interviewed for a book called Good to Great, written by Jim Collins. And in that book, the question is asked of Jim Stockdale, listen, how did you make it? I mean, how did you make it through that seven and a half years? And here's what he said. He said, I made it because I never lost faith in the end of the story. I made it. Because I never lost faith in the end of the story. You see, that's the Stockdale paradox. That he faced the reality of his life. He was living through atrocity and torture. He didn't look away. He didn't look away from the guys around him. He didn't look away from those who were inflicting this. He lived in that reality. And yet... He never lost faith in the end of the story, which for Jim was, right? Home. Home. And so he lived in this paradox where the reality of his life was hard, painful, filled with suffering. And yet, he lived with such hope. 
He never lost sight of the end of the story. And so here we are this morning. In Daniel chapter 10 through 12, we are at the end of Daniel's life and the end of this book. In the end of Daniel's life, he's given a a picture of the future. And it's not pretty. It is filled with violence. All of what he thought the future would be and of people coming out of exile, he sees it doesn't always go right. And he's grappling with all of that reality, but he doesn't look away, and God keeps speaking. And as God speaks into Daniel's life, he gives him the end of the story. And it fills Daniel with hope. So this morning, in a moment here, I'm going to read excerpts from Daniel chapter 10 through 12. I'm not going to read, you can be thankful, I'm not going to read every verse of three chapters, but excerpts. And and let these inspired words of God speak to you. Draw out of them in the midst of what your life, what you're going through. And let's be listening for the end of the story and the hope that is ours. From Daniel chapter 10 through 12. In the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel. And the word was true. It was about a great war. And understanding was given to Daniel in a vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three whole weeks. For three weeks, I did not eat any choice food, no wine, no meat entering my mouth, and I was standing by the bank of the great river, the Tigris River. I lifted up my eyes, and there before me stood a man, clothed in linen with the belt of finest gold around his waist, His body was like gemstone. His face was like lightning. His eyes like blazing torches. His arms and his feet like the gleam of burnishing bronze. And his voice, the sound of his words, was like a sound of an army. And when I heard the sound of his words, I fell on my face. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly loved. Understand the words I am speaking to you. Stand up, because I have been sent to you. And when he heard these words, I stood up shaking. And he said to me, do not be afraid, Daniel, because from the first day that you set your heart to understand, you humbled yourself before your God. And your words have been heard. And I have come in response to your words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remain there with the kings of Persia. But I have come to tell you what will happen to your people in the days to come. And as he was saying this, I bowed down with my face to the ground, and I said, How can I, your servant, speak with you, my Lord? My strength is gone. I can barely breathe. And he touched me, and he gave me strength, and he said to me, O man greatly loved, do not be afraid. Peace be with you. Be strong. Be strong. And as he was speaking, I was strengthened. And I said, Speak, my Lord, because you have given me strength. And then in Daniel 11, Daniel records the vision of the future of this, what was all going on. This divine man gives him the the future concerning his people. He gets word that many foreign kings would come and they would rule over his people. There would be one king who would rule with great dominion. He would do whatever he pleases. But as soon as he arises, that kingdom too would fall. His kingdom would be plucked up 
And he says that others' kings will come and they'll wage wars and they'll raise armies and their armies will sweep across the land like an irresistible flood. And that hits a little bit home. <laughs> and the hearts of the kings, these kings, would be filled with pride, but none of those kings and kingdoms would endure. They would all end. They will all likewise be broken. And here we go, picking up again. Then he said to Daniel, The violent among your people will rebel, and they will fall, and they will fail. And then more kings will come, and a king will come to rise to power, but he will stumble and fall, and another king will rise up in his place, and in a matter of days he will be broken. Then another king will come with a great and mighty arm, and he will not stand. His army will be swept away, yet the people who know their God, the people who know their God will stand firm. They will take action. And the wise among the people will make many understand and some of the wise will stumble so that they may be refined, purified, and made white until the time of the end. And then in those days, your people will be delivered. Everyone whose name is found written in the book of life and many who will sleep in the dust of the death, in the dust of the earth will awake some to everlasting life, and others to shame and everlasting horror. But the wise will shine, they will shine like the brightness of the heavens above, and those who turn many to righteousness will shine like stars forever and ever. As for you, Dan, go your way. You go your way to the very end, and you will rest And you will rise to your assigned place at the end of days. And that concludes the book of Daniel. So let me ask you a question. I'm sure someone has asked you this before. What do you like to hear first? The good news or the bad news? What kind of personality are you? Do you like to hear the bad news first or the good news first? You know, there are some, right, that will only live in the bad news. That's all they want to hear. We call this like chicken little. It doesn't matter what good is happening. It doesn't matter what. They just focus on the bad. That is what some will hear in the way they order their life. Some don't want to hear anything bad. Just make it all sunshine, puppy dogs, and lollipops. They're like last week we talked about an ostrich in the sand. They just don't want to deal with the bad. They only want to think about and live in the good. But you and I, dear Christian, we live like Jim Stockdale, and like Daniel, we will not look away from the bad. And there's some bad in life, isn't there? It's not good news. Some of the bad you just recognize in your own heart. You realize and know the sin that is within you, the thoughts, the words, the way that it's affected your relationship to God Almighty. You know the pain that you've inflicted in other people's lives. You know that stuff. Don't look away from it, as bad as it can be. We we know the reality of our world. It can feel like a wicked, harmful place. We do not bury our heads in the sand when it comes to that. And then... Despite all of the evil, despite all of what's going in our own heart, there is the ultimate, the last enemy, right? And we'll all face the heartache of death. But we live with that, but we also, dear Christian, there is for us good news. We never lose sight We never lose faith in the end of the story. That's what Daniel lived with. 
And that's what we live with too. We confessed it. We stood on our own two feet and we proclaimed with our mouth a resilient faith that says, I may be in the midst of a flood sweeping through my life. It is messy, it is mucky, it's just all, and I may be in the midst of all of that, but this is not the end of my story. Because the end sounds like this. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. And here's the end. The resurrection of the dead and life everlasting. That's the end of the story that you live with no matter the bad. You are greatly loved. Because we have a Savior and a Lord who entered into our camp. He is the highest ranking. There is no other name above the name of Jesus. And he entered into our camp. He suffered, not just as a symbol, but he suffered and died for you in a love that redeems and saves and reconciles and gives life for you. He will be buried, and the third day he rises from the grave in all power and honor and glory. He still reigns. And so your end is his. It's life. It's life. Polycarp. It's the moment of his death. He is surrounded, and um, it's said in that moment, right before he's executed, it's said that he was serene and calm. And then these words, filled with courage and joy. And with his dying breath, he said these words, but because for Polycarp, for you, for me, the end is not the end. Listen to these final words of Polycarp. He said this, O Lord, I bless you because you have deemed me worthy of this day and hour to take my part in the number of martyrs in the cup of Christ. And here it is. The end is not the end. These are the final words. To take up the cup of Christ for resurrection to eternal life. A resilient faith is a faith that lives when you know the end of the story. And for you, it's life. In Jesus' name, amen. The good news, I'm done. <laughs> to remain standing for our closing song.
If there are any of you that would like intercessory prayer to be prayed with or for, uh, Terry Bauer, our deacon, will be up in the front here. If you're not, uh, don't feel comfortable coming forward, he will find you just remain in your seat. With that, let's go with God's blessing and benediction. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. Go trusting that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week, everybody. Remember, go out that door. Next week, just maybe come in that door. Open up. No, I'm just kidding.